at that time. So I, I want to welcome everyone. My name is Darren, and uh, I am excited to be here at another Beyond the Veil with one of my favorite people, Dr. Bradley Nelson, and I'm going to introduce him in just a moment. But for the next 60 minutes, I just invite you to let go and open up your heart, open up your mind to be a part of a dialogue that helps us to appreciate and value what's beyond the veil, what's beyond our conscious perception in any and every given moment, because every human being is born to be remarkable, is born to shine. And at the same time, and especially in our world today, where there are so many aspects of really epic change, that's perpetuating uncertainties and fear-based narratives, things that we go through personally in our own lives, whether it be a health challenge or our family, our relationships, intimacy, finances, that every human being is being shaped by patterns that are handed down by our ancestors. And there's this invisible multi-generational pattern of decisions and, and thought forms and feelings and actions, inactions, reactions, and choices that either limit or open us up to a possibility, even a probability of creating the next greatest version of ourself. And my motivation for this Beyond the Veil is to be a light in the world, just like my beautiful friend, Dr. Bradley Nelson, to be a, a light in the world where we show that there is a path, there are strategies, there are technologies that can empower you to use your mind as a tool versus the program mind that becomes a tormentor. And my dear friend, Dr. Bradley Nelson, retired doctor of chiropractic, we are birds of a feather, is one of the world's foremost experts, natural methods of achieving wellness. And he's trained thousands, thousands of certified practitioners worldwide and has helped people overcome physical, emotional discomfort by releasing their emotional baggage. And boy, emotional baggage is something that everyone carries on one level or another. What kind of tools do you have? So his best-selling book, The Emotion Code, a must read, provides step-by-step-by-step -step -step instructions for working with the body's energy healing power. And so today is one of the world's foremost experts on natural methods of achieving wellness. Dr. Brad spends his time lecturing internationally, writing articles, developing the next iteration, the next greatest version of the emotion code, this ever-evolving body code and credential uh, programs for the emotion code and the body uh, code practitioners. So, uh, Brad, thanks so much for being here. Um, I'm a huge fan, and uh, I'm grateful that we met through the movie Emotion. What an incredible, epic film uh, that was. I'm so grateful to have been a part of it. But to meet you and to begin to get to know you and to create a friendship is really, it's such an honor. So thank you for your time, your energy, and your beautiful heart. Well, thank you, Darren. Um... You know, you and I have a, a mutual admiration society going on. I'm just, uh, I'm really thrilled to get to connect with you and, um, and to be a, on, on your show and to chat for a while about this, uh, this really interesting, really fascinating topic. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, and, and it is the, just the concept of, let's all just take a deep breath. And as you let go, feel yourself in this present moment, feel yourself in your body and just acknowledge what does it mean to be beyond the veil? What does it mean to connect beyond what you're capable of perceiving with the senses that you currently have? And Dr. Brad, as you have so much experience, in your own personal life and as a result you share with others what it means to walk the path of going beyond the veil as a practice i'm just curious as far as like what you uh see as like what are some things what are like things that you feel are important to recognize to even begin that journey of beyond the veil 
Well, you know, um, I, I had a really interesting, uh, a very profound experience with this. Um, what I've always believed uh, is that, um, and they're, you know, talking to different people, when you talk about the veil, it can mean different things to different people. To me, um, what it means is um, it's like a veil of forgetfulness that, um, you know, we've all lived before we came here. I believe we all lived with God. We were in the presence of God, source energy, creator, higher power, however you might refer to that, it's fine. Um, but that's where I believe we were. And when we come into this world, um, we didn't have physical bodies there. We were spirit beings. But I believe that, that we looked like we look now, uh, that we could move around and we were sentient and we could make decisions and we could uh, you know, choose, make choices. And eventually, um, we're, we end up in this world. And when we come into this world, and I don't know how this works, you know, it's the science of higher power or whatever, but we come into this world and there's this veil of forgetfulness that's placed over us so that we don't remember where we were before. The eternities that we have lived already, we don't remember them. And there, are, I think are, there are divine reasons for this, why this veil is placed on our minds. Um, but it, it's an interesting thing, you know, um, I was riding in the car one day with my son, Joe, and Joe's 27, I think now, but he was, he was about three. And um, he was sitting in the back seat of the car and we pulled up at the stoplight. He's in his car seat. And all of a sudden he just bursts out laughing. And then he says, I got my body. And oh, wow. Yeah, I got, I looked back at him, right? I know the truth bumps. <laughs> I looked back in the rearview mirror and I said, are, are you glad you got your body? He said, yeah. I yeah. thought, yeah, that's interesting. And then I had this experience. One day I was, uh, I was 18 years old and I was just sitting quietly meditating. And um, all of a sudden I had this, this incredible experience where um, somehow um, that veil uh, was parted or lifted just a little bit. And the result of that, it, it wasn't that I could remember anything. It wasn't that I was able to really have any memories come back. But what, instead, what happened was all of a sudden, I went from just sitting there very quiet, just very relaxed, to suddenly being absolutely filled with this impossibly huge I can't even describe how powerful this was. It was a feeling of homesickness, right? Wow. And it was just absolutely, I mean, overwhelmingly powerful. And I mean, I I felt homesickness before, but I mean, if you took if you took the most most powerful feeling of homesickness you've ever felt in your life and you magnified it to I don't know maybe a million times or something, this was wow. And this lasted for like three seconds, and it was homesickness. To be back in that place where I used to live, and I think where we all used to live, and and then it, it was like this little window opened and then closed, and it just left me reeling, and um, and I realized from that a couple of things. I know for a fact that um, this place where we live, that we call home, this world, it's not really our home. We're mm. just passing through here. And I'll tell you another thing that I absolutely know for a fact, and that is that if we did not have that veil of memory, that forgetfulness that is yeah. upon all of us, we would not be able to stand it in this world for five minutes. I mean, we have come so far. We have fallen so far down from where we were in that place of absolute love and gratitude and perfection living in that place you know with with god with our father now here we are in this world i mean there are divine reasons why we're here right um i think this is a perfect testing ground really i've thought a lot about this and it's like we're in this place we, we don't know who we were before we don't know where we were before but now we're here and every moment of every day 
we get to make choices, mm. right? And when I turned 60, and the, you know, those of you, I, you know, Darren, I know you're a lot younger than me, but, but when I turned 60, those of, uh, those of you that are, that are on, the, uh, uh, on the Zoom can pr probably relate to this. You get to a certain age in your life. And um, what struck me when I got to 60 was um, in looking back on my life, and seeing how the decisions that I had made had played out in my life and what the downstream consequences of those decisions were and how the decisions that I had seen other people make in their lives, how those had played out. So, you know, it's so interesting, but, um, but yeah, that, that's the experience that I had with this. So to me, it's like, um, it, this veil, that's how I look at it. And it's a very, very real thing. And once in a while we get little glimpses and I think little children, um, I, I think that uh, sometimes little, little children don't really have that veil totally fully formed. And so sometimes um, they can remember things that, uh, that we don't remember and they can, you know, sometimes they see things that we don't see. It's kind of like, you know, if there's a spirit or an angel that comes into the room, you know, if you have a dog or a cat in your room, all of a sudden they'll follow it you know, with their yeah. eyes. And you wonder, what in the heck is that dog looking at? Amazing. It's amazing. I mean, and that's why we're so impressionable as kids because we're so open. And as a result of, and, and there's, I've got so many parallel things going through my mind. So I want to converge and just acknowledge your beautiful boy in the back seat going, oh, you know, here I am and finding myself in my body and like I got my body. And that we come through this veil into this world. And in the lifeline technique, um, there's a part, present, past, future, time, declarative statement portal that I teach people. In the, in the past, there's a statement where we acknowledge the part of ourself, the past part of ourself that was programmed to forget that feeling the greatness, the confidence, the ease, the presence of my divine self is always my choice, but I was programmed to forget. And because we don't remember that we were programmed to forget that memory that is in the short-term file, it hasn't been integrated yet. Because I love you that you say, I know. You know because you've had an experience and you've lived it, you know that this is not our original home and that you had these memories of these moments of enlightenment you sparked in me a memory for me when I was a little boy, that this just came through, that I had these multiple scary nightmares that I was going faster, faster, brighter, brighter, in more intense, more intense. I'd wake up, ah, and I know that I was moving through the veil now as a child. I was going in and out of that veil. And it's such a profound thing, hindsight's 2020. And um, as we acknowledge that if we had to spend five minutes processing all that we're experiencing as human beings, and you're a, 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 you're a master teacher at empowering people to um, process trapped emotions, emotions that have not been fully uh, integrated, that when we are in any way forced to process emotions that we are not capable, as far as consciously capable of processing emotions, we die. We die. Like there's, um, there's a, um, a disease where it's like, uh, we have a, a, an emotional heart attack. The heart cannot process, uh, if it cannot handle a particular emotion, um, then we literally die. And, and that's why grief is filtered into stages in this world that we live in, that there's a spectrum of emotions that when we begin to learn about this, that we're programmed to forget. Every night we go to bed, we wake up, it's brand new. And we've forgotten that when we remember who we are, we're in our joy and our expansion, our tingly goosebumps, our, our light. But this is the journey for every human being. And I raised my hand. I raised my hand as far as 
the parts of me that get triggered and feel insecure or frustrated or dot, 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 the emotional experience isn't something that we can avoid or make go away. It's part of the human condition, like our nose and our ears. Right. But what does it mean to actually acknowledge that there is something more? Exclamation point. And now more than what meets the eye, I was diagnosed with cancer. I was diagnosed with COVID. I, was, I, I have autoimmune disease. I got digestive, hormonal, cardiovascular imbalances. Here I am. I suffer with OCD, addiction. You know, I'm caught in the patterns of reactivity. Now, what does it mean to have access to Beyond the Veil that empowers an evolutionary transformation for us as individuals? And the potential bonus is that it becomes a ripple, right? For the world that we're a part of. Right. Well, you know, really what it all comes down to is, uh, is what you talk about. Um, and it's really love and gratitude. Those higher, those high, high, high vibrations, right? You know, we talk about, um, so many people talk about, um, about becoming an ascended being, right? What does that mean to become an ascended being? And I've thought about that a lot, you know, and uh, there was actually a, a YouTube video that I saw. I've never found it again. But, um, but it was really interesting. It was a guy that um, was an emergency room doctor. Maybe you've seen this. And he was being interviewed. And what he said was that normally, um, it's not like in the movies or on TV. Uh, in the hospital, when somebody flatlines and they're in cardiac arrest, he said, you know, in the movies and on TV, they, they're able to pull a lot of those people out, and, you know, just by shocking. But he said, in reality, 85% um, of the time, they're gone. 15% of the time, they're able to resuscitate them and, you know, and bring them back. But one day, he had this experience that totally changed his life. He said that mm. one day in the ER, they had three different people that they were able to resuscitate after being flatlined. And they all said the same thing. There was an older man, an older woman, and then a kind of a middle-aged guy, I think. And they all said, why did you bring me back? They all said, for the first time in my entire life, I felt totally accepted. Wow. Isn't that interesting? Yes. That changed his life. Right? And, and, and I've thought about that a lot, right? And, and people who die and they, they pass on and they go through that veil to the other side, right? Um, they very, very often report the feelings of absolute love and, you know, total unconditional love for them. And I've thought about that and I've realized, you know, those people felt totally accepted, right? Totally accepted. And Darren, isn't, isn't total acceptance really the fruit of unconditional love? Right? Yeah. And so, you know, when you, when you talk about becoming an ascended being, um, some of the other things that happens uh, with people when they die and they come back, they're the only ones, of course, you know, we hear from. The other ones are, they stay gone. But the ones that come back, they'll sometimes say that, you know, they have a life review, right? And, um, and they're never asked how big of a car they drove or, you know, how big their house was or how big their mortgage was or anything like that or how much money was in the bank. None of that. Hmm. None of that matters. What they're asked instead oftentimes is how much love were you able to develop for your fellow beings on the mm -hmm. earth and how much knowledge were you able to gain? And so, you know, when you think about it, um, this is one of the things that I love so much about your, your methodology is that, is that love and gratitude are, are central to it, right? And, um, and I think the idea of becoming an ascended being, I think really really revolves around your ability to love. Yeah. Right? And, and, I, and, I, and I would love to just unpack this because part of the journey for me has been realizing the simplicity of ascending or evolving. However, 
as simple as it is, it's not easy. Right. When <laughs> I'll only speak for me, when I am in the state of reaction, yes. that part of me that in moments where I'm in the highest vibration of who I am, infinite love and gratitude. I'm thinking it, I'm feeling it, my body's functioning, I'm, my words, the connection, what I'm attracting, the synchronicity is the, those amazing aspects of uh, a moment that take my breath away, that, that are just enlightening, so powerful. And yet the nature of the mind, the invisible mind, the unconscious, the subconscious mind, which make up 90 to 98% of a reality, is that it's seven times faster than our best ninja trained self. So I could be smart and intelligent and have studied and, and done all kinds of things, but it doesn't mean I won't get triggered. And that's the thing that has been part of the driving force of why I um, desire to connect with people like you and, and other people that are out in the world or you're, in the trenches, you're, you're doing your work and you're sharing your journey. And it's not that someone's poop don't stink. We all have our experience. Acceptance isn't just what goes your way. Isn't just the things that feel good. What does it mean to accept the unacceptable? What, it mean, what does it mean to forgive the unforgivable, to be compassionate to something that has taking the wind out of your sails where you feel a panic or fear about seeing the mortality of your life, a trauma or a loss that brings you down to your knees. And we as human beings have to walk our path. And I really feel as a community, a conscious community that is open to doing our inner work and has tools like with what you share or like within the lifeline and you know, other colleagues of ours that are out in the world and doing just great things. I want to set the stage of acceptance in a reality way. That there's no one that gets, if this is my perspective, that gets somewhere and lives happily ever after, that it requires a practice, not a perfect. And, and in that practice of it, now I've got tools and strategies that can support me and it's humbling, but to be immune to the humiliation of not being able to accept ourselves or accept something in our life is a journey beyond the veil to remember where we come from, remember where we're going and that this is a short stand. This is a dash between the moment that you were born and the moment you take your last breath. Those moments of NDEs, near-death experiences, where we come back and we go, wow, why did I come back? Oh, my goodness. It's powerful. It is. It's powerful. Um, I've got so many different things. And if you're having a thought, just feel free to go with it. But I just, I had a moment one time. I was leaving my office after working with people. I, don't, I no longer work with people in person. I do everything energetically as we were talking about the quantum world that I can adjust, do needles, do everything, all from an energetic standpoint. It's so beautiful. I'm leaving my office. I've got this 180 gallon saltwater fish tank and I've got a Mexican Tesselada more eel in there that I've had since he was like this big and he's now huge. And I'm getting ready to like give him to like um, the shed aquarium because I cannot keep him anymore. Right. And I noticed that the um, lights are not stable on top and I go and I'm the only one in the office and I go to fix it and they fall in and reflexively, I reach in while the lights are in the water and I'm being electrocuted. Oh no. And, and I am smelling my body and I have never felt this before. One other time when I was a little boy and I stuck scissors in a socket, that sucked. But um, I'm like, oh, I'm like, and I'm saying to myself, this is not how you're dying, Darren. No way, this is not, and, like, Boom. and I come out, and I'm stinking of just like burnt flesh inside. And I call my partner. I'm like, I just electrocuted myself. I'm so messed up. Call my buddy, Dr. Keith Jordan. Please have him just start to run, you know, vibration with me. I went, I slept for 24 hours. But to me, 
I don't know. I, it, was, it was more shocking than anything. Did I die or not? I don't know. I crossed the veil maybe on LSD once, um, but that was a, that's a whole other story in of itself. <laughs> Coming back to being in this world and being in a space of acceptance What's the path of, of guiding, just living ourselves and guiding others to know that, that this path of acceptance exists no matter what we've been through, no matter what we've gone through and where, where we're going? Yo, thank you for sharing that, man. That must have been, uh, did, the, did the eel survive? It did. But then like a month later, I came on in and this is like the paradox of it all. And it was shattering for me. Um, that dang top had a crack in it and he had jumped out and I found him on the floor and I was devastated. I walked in and once again, I was the only one in my office. I was last to leave, first to come. We know the world. Sure. And um, I walked in and I just screamed. I'm like, no, no, no. And he was, go and he was gone in that way. So he lived that. He lived that electrical thing. I did too. But um, I guess... It was the time. It was love and gratitude. Oh man! Well, I'm glad you survived that. Would have been a great loss to the world if you checked out then. How how long ago was that? That was in 2002, 2001. That was like right around, just right when I was waking up to the lifeline technique. To tell the truth. Interesting. Well, yeah, I did, actually didn't put two and two together. Yeah. <laughs> oh man! Well, yeah. I'm glad you. I'm glad you. Uh, you lived through that. You know, um, you, you're so right that it's it's um, it's so interesting in terms of quantum physics. You know, when in quantum physics, there's this, uh, as you know, there's this theory about uh, the collapsing of the wave function and and how um, uh, you know, in any given moment, we've got a variety of choices that uh, are uh, diverging choices. Um, diverging paths that we can choose in every given moment we can we can make a choice when we make that choice um, in quantum physics we would say when you choose something then you're collapsing the wave function you're collapsing all those other possibilities of that moment into the one that you've chosen and um, and we go in our lives from one choice to another from collapsing the wave function of all these other possibilities into one that we've chosen and we do that over and over and over. And at the end of our lives, our life is the end result of our having collapsed all of those myriad wave functions into the choices that we've made, right? And so um, it's so interesting. And, you know, with emotions, when, when emotions come up for us, you know, what I, what I teach is that, that that's a message from the subconscious mind. You know, it, it's, it's coming up for you based on what's happening in the moment, but also based on the emotional baggage that you already have and so on. And um, what a lot of people don't realize is that uh, we always have choice. Those emotions do come up for us. And uh, what I try to teach people is that it's okay to feel that emotion. That's a message from the subconscious. But then um, you don't have to really get into the pig pen with that emotion and get really, you know, get really involved with it and enhance that emotion in that moment, you can choose to feel um, something else. There's a whole, if, if there's a deck of cards for negative emotions, there's a deck of cards for positive ones too. And you can choose a positive emotion. And um, you know, the, the, the most profound example of, of this that I think I've, I've ever read about is, uh, is where Jesus, is, he's just been going around, you know, healing the sick and raising the dead and, and uh, giving sight back to the blind and healing the lepers and all these amazing things, right? Uh, and now he's being crucified. They're nailing him to the cross. And, um, you know, I, I can't even imagine how much resistance I would have to that uh, excruciatingly painful ordeal. But it's interesting because you read and the emotion that he chose, because we always choose our emotions, what he chose again, was unconditional love, right? And his concern was for these people that were nailing him to the cross. And he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do, right? So what an amazing example um, that is, um, I think, for us, because it's, it's about forgiveness. 
You know, think about it. If, if there's somebody in your life that you haven't been able to forgive, then your unconditional love is lacking in that little area, right? Maybe yeah. it's you that needs to be forgiven. Maybe you need to have some more unconditional love for yourself. And um, I don't believe that it's possible really to have total peace in our lives unless and until we've really forgiven everybody. And sometimes that can be a really hard thing, but sometimes that's the biggest lesson I think that we need to learn. You know, all these things happen to us in our lives and we have a tendency to think that these things that happen, you know, the family that we're born into and the abuse we suffer or, you know, the shocking or uh, ab you know, abusive, difficult things we go through are, um, are just bad luck. But I actually believe that it's all orchestrated. I think that, I think that we, uh, before we come into this world, we spend a lot of time, I think, uh, I, we spend a lot of time with our father in heaven, figuring out where we're going to be born, what our experiences are going to be. And they're all custom tailored, I think, to us as individuals to help us learn the lessons that we need to learn in this world. So um, I think, you know, it's interesting because I remember, um, I can't remember the, there was a guru who uh, probably more than one who said, uh, uh, in my world, nothing ever goes wrong, Right. And, and that's about that. Uh, that's about acceptance, right? Radical acceptance. Radical acceptance. You know, um, in, in our own life, we, um, my wife and I have eight kids and um, one of Nothing ever sons, goes wrong. Nothing ever. <laughs> <laughs> right. And it doesn't. <laughs> oh, sometimes things go terribly wrong. We have a son who is, uh, who was schizophrenic and ended mm. up just snapping completely one day and he actually uh, took a couple of people's lives and um and you know uh that's that's a shattering experience that yeah. uh you would not you wouldn't want to wish it on your worst enemy someone that you absolutely hated because it's just too cruel right um let alone the suffering on the other side of you know these other families who had to suffer to lose their loved ones but um you know We've decided, my wife and I have decided that we, we practice radical acceptance of this. There's nothing that we can do to change what happened with our son. Uh, there's nothing we can do, but we know that in the end, it's all going to be made right. And for now, all that we can do is do our best to, you know, to support him and, and, um, and try to help alleviate the damage, you know, in whatever ways we can. And so, um, so is it possible to still, if something like that happens to you, um, it's a devastating thing. Is it possible to still be happy? Is it possible to still have joy? I'll tell you something. When that happened, I can remember feeling uh, that I could never, ever be happy again, that I would never have another happy moment in my life when I was in the middle of of going through this, uh, the aftermath of this, but um, you know, practicing radical acceptance of things as they are, and realizing that um, there are some things that we we can't change no matter what, uh, and um, and trying to cultivate that love and gratitude, and trying to choose those higher emotions, um, it's been a really interesting lesson for me, because um, there was a while there where it felt like I was spending all my waking hours kind of uh, tiptoeing around the edge of a, of a black hole. The if black I stuck hole. my foot into that hole, I would start to get sucked into that. And, yeah. um, but um, but there, there's hope for us. We can have happiness. We can have joy, no matter what it is that goes on in our lives. And, um, and cultivating gratitude. Um, you know, it's so interesting because I, I really really believe in fact the scriptures ancient scriptures teach that the purpose of our existence is to learn how to have joy right well how in the world do you have joy when things like that happen or when all these other bad things happen to us and all these crazy things are happening in the world how can you have joy well it's all about you as an individual and the choices that you make and we can choose to be happy uh in spite of what's going on and gratitude is such a key part of that right because gratitude is. is that it's such a high vibration. It's way up there on the scale, right near joy. And I kind of figured that out that, 
if you can actually be grateful for things, and another thing that's taught in those ancient scriptures is that we should receive everything that happens to us, all things we should receive with thanksgiving, with gratitude. Well, it's easy to feel grateful for good things, right? Right, right. That's easy. But what about... But what about the gifts and strange wrapping paper? And I just want to say, <laughs> God, God bless you and your beautiful family and, and all that were impacted by that profound life experience. And that's exactly what it was, was a life experience. And, and to move through something like that, where a part, and I'm, I'm saying this with very intentional words right now, a part of you in that as you went through it because it just didn't happen like that i would imagine a part of you thought i can never be happy right. a part of you felt i can never experience joy again because this is what happened with my son and in in the impact of the people that lost their lives that a part of you and as we create a relationship with that part of ourself, then we can begin the journey of emotion in processing, transforming, in using that emotion as a fuel to step into what we are here to experience joy, acceptance, allowing, gr gratitude, beauty. We're, we're, this, is, this is heaven on earth. This is, it's been brought down here, yet we're programmed to forget. And in that forgetting from, I stubbed my toe on my bed, ouch, that sucked to the extreme trauma of life, to our two plus year COVID experience on planet earth where so many things are going on that cause us to question our lens of perception that is driven by coming through the veil and we forget the path, which I'm just so grateful to be so deep with you, so authentic with you, which is your nature. I just, but I want to just say thank you because this, this kind of conversation is healing. This kind of conversation gives all of us permission to acknowledge the pain, the cross that we bear and to go forgive us because we're programmed to forget and we don't know. And so we all, all do things that when we look back at those parts of ourselves, we blame, we shame, we regret, we wrong. And then we're in this place that, that over time it becomes an identity, a biological genetic expression of disease in every aspect of our life. And, and I just want to um, just say something stupid and beautiful at the same time so that we can all just awaken to what this freaking thing called the veil is. And that is, as everyone's listening and everyone's hearing the immense amount of suffering that my beautiful friend and his family went through, son, to go through that, given the opportunity to create a life, design it, manifest it, would anyone ever choose to create it with these kinds of experiences where there's such trauma, there's such loss, there's such, I can never be happy. I can never feel joy. Would that ever be a choice? Would that ever be, because I know you said we choose our emotions and, 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 and I get that from a consciousness space when we're awake and we remember, but when we're not awake and we don't remember, we're not choosing our emotions. We're a program like the computers that we're using to talk to one another. And we have a bandwidth that's as wide as that. And then all I can see, feel, hear, and experience is that. Right. Powerful. Powerful. The answer is hell. 
Hell fucking no, would never choose it. I would never choose it. No, 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 of course not, duh. But why does it happen then? Why does it happen? And that's why we're talking here today. Because there's a part of you, me, everyone listening, and everyone on this beautiful planet, there's a part of ourself that also is committed like an angel, like an ascended master, like a guide. And it's a part of ourself that's saying, I'm gonna wake you up. I'm gonna wake you up. I'm gonna wake you up to remember who you are. It's the dark night of soul, brother, right? Yeah, I mean, sometimes, um, sometimes that's what it takes. Um, you know, to wake us up is, uh, is difficult experiences. And, and like I said, I, I think it's all kind of orchestrated. You know, we, we have our path and um, no one's path is easy. Um, our paths are all difficult. And I think that um, uh, I heard somewhere that the first thing you need to realize about life is that it's, it's not designed to be easy. It's designed to be challenging and difficult. And once you realize that, then that, that actually helps. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's been a really interesting thing. You know, um, I had another experience I want to share with you. I, I've, been, I've been really blessed in my life to have um, a lot of really profound um, spiritual experiences that sometimes I wasn't, most of the time, I think I wasn't really asking for, but I, they just happened. Um, but uh, another really interesting experience that I had, you know, we, we've all probably heard um, that expression, that the body is a temple. We talk about the body temple, the body is a temple. I had this experience one day, uh, when I was in practice, I had this, um, this habit, before I'd go to work on a patient, before I'd give them their, their treatment in my office, uh, I would just take a moment and I would just ask God to help me to help that person. And, uh, right? and it was just a, just a momentary pause thing. And you know, a lot of us do that, I think. And, and it's, um, it's something that, uh, it was a totally private, totally personal habit. Nobody ever knew that I was actually saying a prayer for them. But there were times when information would suddenly pour into me in response to that. Not, not very often. I mean, that was kind of the exception by far rather than the rule. But one day, um, a person came in. Now, at the time, I was, using, um, I was using the activator method in chiropractic, and I had an activator yeah. table, right? Darren knows about this. And so a person would lie on the table, they'd grab these handles, and then I would press a button and the table would go down flat and the foot plate would drop away so I could look at their leg length and so on. So anyway, this patient comes in, uh, stands up on the table, I lay the table down, and then I have this little habit before I go to work on them, I just say, all right, Father in heaven, please help me to help this person. Uh, I, I, I could use some help here, thank you. And, um, and all of a sudden, it was like the, the eyes of my consciousness somehow, my, my third eye, my inner uh, ability to, to understand. It's, it's like, it's hard to describe this. It's like the scales fell from my eyes. You've heard that expression, right? All of a sudden, all of a sudden, for the first time in my entire life, I actually understood and actually perceived reality. And the reality was that I was standing in the presence of this sacred temple, the temple of the body. This was a spiritual experience that I had. And, wow. um, and it, it, again, it was like a little window that opened and lasted for a few seconds. I mean, it immediately filled me with this deepest sense of reverence and awe. And then the window closed. But, you know, that, that really changed how how I view things, how I look at people. So every single one of us, you see, this physical body that we have is, um, it really truly is a sacred temple. And you know, I'd heard that before, but never really paid it much attention. But all of a sudden, I had this experience and I realized, wow, that, that's a real thing. It really is true. And so, um, you know, so when, when we're working on the body, um, helping the body to function better, to feel better, to work better, um, we're like, Temple repairmen, right? There you go. Temple That's repair a great people. one. That's a great one. <laughs> yeah, you know. So um, <laughs> I, I'm a temple repairman. I work on the I body know. temple. It's amazing. So, yeah. So if you think about it, you know that spirit <laughs> we have, right? 
the spirit and the physical body, they, they integrate perfectly. And I mean, I think we've lived for, I, I think probably forever, really, we've, we've been alive forever, but now all of a sudden we're in this different kind of, kind of a existence because now that spirit body is now infused and joined to this physical body. And so now we're having to manage, you know, not only our, you know, our, our, our mental and emotional things, but we've got this physical body and they're all integrated and they're all kind of disintegrated sometimes. And so um, trying to make it all work together can be, can be really challenging, but it's a really, I think it's a really important part of our existence. And um, I don't know how we got off on it. I guess I, I guess that story came to mind and I wanted to share that story because that was really beautiful Beautiful. for me. Um, Yeah. I think it's a great segue for you and I to um, be temple workers and anybody that would like to um, have a, um, their temple worked on by my beautiful friend, Dr. Brad and I, we would love to uh, tag team and join our forces together. I got to just tell you, I am so tingly right now. I am so, I'm vibrating, um, I'm vibrating so much. My mind is so creatively awake right now in your presence. I'm just so grateful Me too. Um, for the reflection of it. It's, it's so much fun. This is like, this is my love language right here is making this kind of connection. So it's, it's so beautiful. So anyone that would like to just raise your hand and um, come on and, Dr. Brad and I will uh, take you through a beautiful process. And um, if you have any questions, we're happy to answer questions. Vienna, well, we have people coming on. There's lots of people that want to have questions. So we'll bring Vienna on. Okay. Oh. Hi. Hi, Vienna. You, you just got to unmute yourself. You just got to unmute yourself for a moment. Thank you. Am I you unmuted go. now? Thank Beautiful. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you so, much. so much for your shares. I've, oh. I've got so many notes. <laughs> and yet I trust it's written on my heart. <laughs> it is. It is. Beautiful. Where are you in the world, Vienna? Yes, thank you. Uh, this morning, I, I like the, that word you just used, disintegrated. And I've been doing a lot of emotion code, a lot of, a lot of all kinds of different beautiful energy work things. And yet this morning, I just feel scattered and I, I'm wanting so much to pull everything into alignment and that I'm believing that provision is there. I'm like standing on the, the beautiful precipice of jumping into doing my work and believing it's worth being paid for (laughs) all of that. And so I, I just, would love some alignment. Thank you. Can you I'm, I'm just curious. Do you mind if I just, just jump in just in a, a, a quick twist, set the stage jump. here? I, I have a question. Like, are you feeling that scattered feeling right now? Are you aware of that feeling within you right now? Mm-hmm. And I'm curious, like, as you feel into it, if you were to rate the scattered Vienna on a scale of zero to 10, zero is you're not scattered at all. 10 is like, get me off the planet. I'm going beyond the veil and I'm just going to live out there. What do you rate the feeling here. scattered that's alive inside of you? Um, I, I actually just muscle tested because sometimes when I just can't figure it out, I get that it's a seven right now. Yeah. So it's very powerful feeling. And I'm going to ask you a question. This is just one of the questions that turns us from our head to our heart. Would you ever choose to create your life a day or a moment where you're being driven by a seven out of 10 scatter and not knowing your own worth and on any level? Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. So what's not a choice or an action, the reaction it just means you've got a subconscious program, not a big deal. Um, the beautiful thing, it is a big deal because you have an opportunity now. This means I love you in American Sign Language. This yes. means I love you. And so put that over your heart. And when it comes to your life, when it comes to your passion, when it comes to you being you, Vienna, ask your heart and listen because the divine greatness purity is in your heart right now your remembrance is in your heart right now what is it that your heart desires to feel vienna Um, peace and acceptance come to mind cool go ahead and say it i am peace and acceptance i am peace and acceptance Mm -hmm. this is why we're here i am peace and acceptance i am peace and acceptance 
And let's go into the divine. And the divine is imagination. Are you open, ready, and willing to use your I am peace and acceptance imagination right now, Deanna? Yes. So imagine you remember who you are. You believe. You know. You're living the life. You're seeing through the eyes of peace and acceptance yourself, the world around you. Your heart beats with feelings. Your body heals. Here you are. You're attracting. This experience is just one of just many to come of peace and acceptance. How does it feel to imagine? This is my nature. I'm peace and acceptance. How does that feel in your body? Mm. Alive. Tingly. Mm -hmm. Feel that that alive feeling. Feel that tingly feeling. What's really cool, I just want to point this out. That's the medicine. (laughs) <laughs> that a lot of things. That's the new, that's the evol- that's the sprout of the seed. That's a sign <laughs> that the peace and acceptance is already alive inside of you. In, in, in using kinesiology, and I'm doing a real quick version here, there's a core limiting belief in your throat chakra. And when it gets triggered, your ability to feel what you feel, know what you know, express what you express, and create healthy boundaries, relationships, opportunities, becomes reactive and resistant programmed versus active and choosing, as Dr. Brad was saying. When this part gets triggered, all you can see is through a lens of fear of intimacy, stuck in Mm. the past, insecure, regret. And this pattern, this attractor field, stems from when you were nine months after birth. So nine months after birth, you were in an environment that you did not have tools or consciousness like you do now. You did not have an environment that could guide you, support you, hold a space like Dr. Brad and I. And so as a result, you were given a gift of protection because as Dr. Brad said at the beginning, if you had to process those emotions at nine months, you would have died. And so your subconscious protected you And you've been living from this lens of nine months ever since. And the nine months after birth part of you is showing up as scattered today, not to victimize you, to wake you up. And for the first time, embrace that inner child, embrace that inner child. And I'm going to hand the baton to my beautiful, brilliant, amazing friend, Dr. Brad, to embrace this in, um, in all that it is. Now that we've made contact, go for it, brother love. Well, uh, Fantastic. I mean, this is so, so fun to watch you do this. Uh, <laughs> um, oh. what, what I'm getting also is that um, you, have, uh, you have some emotional energy that you absorbed from someone else at a certain point in your life. Um, might have been the same time. Let me, just, let me just figure it out here really quick. Uh, it was a little bit, a little bit later than that. Um, it was around age nine. So nine months, then around age nine, okay. you absorbed an emotion of, um, let's see here. And uh, you absorbed an emotion of hopelessness. Mm. So in other words, somebody else was feeling that emotion of hopelessness. And, um, and it was, your, it was actually, uh, what I'm getting is that it was your mother. And mm. um, so she was feeling hopeless. And that emotion, that vibration was powerful enough that you absorbed it and it kind of became, it became incorporated into you. Does that make sense at all? Yes, absolutely. Both, both time frames. So, um, yeah, thank you. Okay. So with the emotion code, finding that, what, and I'm acting as proxy for you, I'm just going to go ahead and release <laughs> that by just swiping a few times. Yes. There we go. And uh, do we release that? We did. Cool. Okay. This is kind of fun. It is fun. <laughs> hey, so hey, fun. Yeah, go ahead and say it. I'm now choosing to feel alive. I am now choosing to feel alive. Infinite love and gratitude. Infinite love and gratitude. Make that choice again. I'm now choosing. I am now choosing. In this present alive. moment. In this present moment. And here forward. And from here forward. To feel alive. To feel alive. To be peace and acceptance. To be peace and acceptance. It's interesting. I didn't even realize the connection between what we do, Dr. Brad, here right now. But I do something called the assemblage point, which is the bridge between the conscious and subconscious, Uh where the ultimate connection or disconnection is through the crown. And I go like this. I didn't realize (laughs) it was a Oh, my God. I love gratitude. 
in the loving gravity. Oh, gravity. Oh, oh. Nice landing, Vienna. Nice landing. Well oh. done. Now go write on some sticky notes. I am peace and acceptance, feeling alive. That's your affirmation. That's your practice. Look for it like you lost your car keys. Look, look for peace and acceptance all around. You'll find it everywhere in your own mind, in your own <laughs> life. You'll find it everywhere, my love. Thank you for coming Thank on here. You're you amazing. So much. That yeah. was fun. Thank you, Vienna. That's awesome. So you want to take another one? Yeah, sure. This is great. We could do this for a long time. I know, I know. This is seriously a lot of fun. Uh, well, you know, it's, it's so interesting because, um, you know, we, there are these similarities in what we do. And, and um, you know, when, that, when the higher power inspires people to, to bring healing methodologies into the world, they're all a little different, right? But they all kind of dovetail. They all, and, uh, and they can work together beautifully, right? And yes. um, so it, it, it's really fun to see you work. Uh, right, right back at you. It is, it, it's creating all kinds of fun creativity. Jean, welcome. Thank you. Hi. Hey, um, hi, Jean. <laughs> How did I get on here? <laughs> did you? What do you want to be on here? You don't have to, sweetheart. You don't have to. It's oh okay. no, that that would be great. I just never thought for a moment that it would be um, possible. And then when I when I clicked to put a question, and I thought, wow, where do I where do I begin? Um, well, everything's possible, and it just begins by. Uh, by somehow and so wow. how can we be of support how can we be your dream team right now right i am looking for um my joy when you were talking earlier about um missing home i'm gonna cheer up i feel like i i move around a lot and i've never found home so i'm starting to look for it within myself it's got to be inside me um, because it's not out there. Um, I've made a lot of changes in my life. Um, and I, I still feel, though, something is blocking me from my joy. I, um, I feel like I do all the right things and I, um, I have the right mindset. But if I'm completely honest, um, I can't imagine that this is this is the level of joy that I'm going to live my life out with. Mm -hmm. I have absolutely nothing to complain about. Nothing. I'm healthy. I I have a nice, comfortable home. I have some money in the bank. Um, I have a beautiful son. I've got good friends and family. I've got nothing to complain about, and it's like. Um, why don't I feel joy more often? Jean, thank you so much for your vulnerability, which is a sign of power. Thank you so much for just choosing to show up and whether it be was a synchronicity, they're like, how the heck did I get here? <laughs> it it's like was. like talking head song, like, like oh, where, where am I? How did it, oh, you know, this is my beautiful, like, like you, you are here for a reason and obviously, um, I'm so grateful and I know Brad is so grateful too to be in this, this divine space with you. Yep. And this is not for you and this is not on you because you are not broken and you are not missing anything that there's a significant conversation. There's a code that just needs to be translated and we're gonna tap into this vibration. And I always like to ask the truth question, the million dollar question. I always like to ask the truth question so that we can discern versus judge because you're judging yourself right now. And that's not gonna help you. You will not yeah. move forward in any space uh, of expansion if there's judgment of going, why do I keep doing this? What's wrong with me? So let's just answer this truth question so we can move forward. Would you ever choose to create your life a day or a moment where you're tearing up going, man, I'm missing home and I'm blocking myself from my joy. Would you ever choose that? No. Hell no. Not a chance, right? Own that. Own that. I want to. I want to just stop you one second. I'm a little overwhelmed. I didn't.
think I would get on here at all. And I'm like trying to really take it in and be here in this moment, but I'm like, I just need to breathe a moment. Um, yeah. And you, yeah, and, 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 this, and this is the beautiful part because you are worthy and deserving. Yes. And, and you are worthy and deserving of it all. And I always like to have a vibration that's your highest vibration before I go in and embrace the lowest vibration. So I invite you, once you know you wouldn't choose this, it means this is you're being driven by a reactive pattern. You're being driven yes. by a subconscious, invisible part of you that is beyond yes. your veil of perception. And place yes. your hand with love. Place your hand with love over that beautiful sensitive, empathic, powerful goddess heart of yours. Goddess heart of yours. And when it comes to your life as a woman, as a mother, with intimacy, with connection to this earth, being on this planet, being in life, what does your beautiful heart desire? That's the word, desire to feel. What does your heart desire to feel, Jean? Belonging. Well, belonging. Beautiful. Go ahead and say it. I am belonging. I am belonging. Mm -hmm. Two more times and say it like you mean it. I am belonging. I am belonging. There it is right there. Those three words are a complete evolutionary transformation because when you are belonging, you're a different gene, right? Are you open, ready, and willing to use your imagination? Absolutely. Go beyond the veil. You're in the future. You look back on this day and you're like, wow, that one day, I don't know how the heck I got on the call with Dr. Brad and Dr. D, but you know, all of a sudden my life just transformed and I feel home in my body, in my mind, in my life, my vibration, my presence. People around me feel home just thinking about me, hearing a song that reminds them of, of you. How does it feel to imagine I am that? I am belonging. How does it feel? Still a little overwhelmed. Um, I feel like I won the lottery and then I, I really right now I'm like trying to grasp all of this. That's okay. That's the feeling. I won the lottery. Right there. <laughs> I am belonging feeling. I won the lottery. You did, I sweetheart. I won the you lottery. did win the lottery. Feel the feeling. I won the lottery. Give a love and gratitude because this part of you that's being triggered into this place lives in your gut, in your third chakra. And when this gets triggered, it affects your sense of power, your sense of worth. And then you've been looking outside of yourself to be valued, valuable, validated. And once again, this is not honor for you. This is with you because everyone is healing from something all the time. So this is going on within each of us as it's going on within you. And this third chakra pattern is a pattern that began when you were 12. So here you are in junior high and you're in an environment that is absolutely emotionally reactive. It's an environment of imbalance in relationship with partner. That's the way people think, feel, speak, and behave. It's an in, it's in environment of avoiding interaction at 12, that's how people think, feel, speak, and behave, avoiding direction. It's an environment of dark pain. Now, when you were 12, your ability to go, yeah, all you people going through your dramatic stuff, I matter, I'm enough, I'm belonging, and I'm feeling like I won the lottery. At 12, you didn't have that consciousness. You didn't have life experiences to draw from. Like you do right now, sister love. And your environment, once again, couldn't give you what they didn't have, couldn't teach you what they didn't know, couldn't lead you down a path they had not traveled. And for the first time, embrace that 12-year-old. And think about your parents. And as you're thinking about your parents, I invite you to repeat, mom and dad. Mom and dad. I know. I know. That you love me. That you love me. You always loved me. You always loved me. You'll forever love me. You'll forever love me. The very best way. The very best way. You knew or know how. You knew or know how. And I accept you. And I accept you. I forgive you. I forgive you. I'm so grateful you're my parents. I'm so grateful you're my parents. I love you. 
I love you. You are loved. You are loved. You are pure love. You are pure love. And mom and dad? And mom and dad? By the way. By the way. I am belonging. I am belonging. And I won the lottery. And I, <laughs> I won the lottery. Infinite love and gratitude. Do I do this too? Yeah, yeah, you do this with me. Infinite love and gratitude. Infinite love and gratitude. Breathe. Red, go for it, brother. Well, uh, while uh, while we've been while we've been you know, while Darren has been working with you, um, I was tuning into you and doing some testing, and um, I found that you have something that we call a heart wall, which is a, an emotional energy that gets put up around the heart. It's it's um, it's literally a trapped emotion, and in your case, it's really old. <clears throat> it's uh, it's from 18 generations ago, um, which is almost 500 years. So this goes back to about the 1500s sometime. Um, you got yeah, it from I'm your chills. father. Mm, yeah, came from your father, you got it from his father. It goes back, it originated with a grandfather of yours, your 18th, uh, or I guess 17th great grandfather, 17th grandfather. And uh, the emotion is heartache. So. What I'm going to do is, you know, same thing, basically. I'm just going to release this. Love and gratitude. Love and gratitude. and um, let's ask, you know, did we get rid of that? We did. And by the way, what's interesting is when we do something like this, it also releases from all those ancestors all the way back. So they're having a party on the other side, too, on the, on the other side of the veil. <laughs> so there you go. And that, um, that actually cleared that energy from the heart, that wall uh that we call the heart wall so um, the heart wall is gone the heart wall it's is gone it's open. Yeah. it's open you are feeling you are fe and you are feeling worthy valued valuable enough you it's alive inside of you and now the fun part is practice belonging practice belonging do things that match the vibration of belonging make choices that are belonging is this a belonging thought no i'm actually judging myself it, what would belonging think? What would belonging feel? What would belonging do? And now go into that because your heart's open, beautiful one. Amazing. Well done, Jean. I, um, I'm overwhelmed um, with gratitude. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, um, I wasn't sure what to do. So thank you. Well, sometimes when we let go, it all unfolds. So thank you so much, such, such deep gratitude. Um, thank you. Yeah, what a pleasure, what an honor, what a gift. Uh, Brad, you are a gift, brother, and I'm so honored. We could do this all day, but I just wanna honor your time and everyone's time as far as just being here. We'll definitely need to do this again because this is amazing. And before we close out, I just want everyone to know that on November 13th, I'm gonna be doing a free event called the Lifeline Technique, three steps for unlocking the portal of your higher self. And then I'm gonna go through three specific portals of the mind, of the body, of beliefs. It's gonna be amazing. And um, for those of you that resonate, wanna learn more, if you've signed up for this Beyond the Veil with Dr. Brad and I, you'll automatically be invited and you can participate. If you're online right now and you're listening, make sure that you sign up for Beyond the Veil and then you'll get an invitation to this free event that's on November 13th. It'll be a 90 minute event chock full of great information. So Dr. Brad, um, thank you, thank you, thank you for this incredible time that just flew by and uh, it was packed with so much. It was really rich content and, and such authenticity. What a heart connection. Thank you, Darren, um, you know, for having me on and for this opportunity to connect with you. Uh, you know, I think about you frequently and just, um, you know, wish you well and success. And, and, and um, it's like I was saying at the beginning of this, it's like Darren and I are, we're in the same boat. We're just on different oars. And, uh, uh, it, and thank all of you for being on with us today. And, uh, and special thanks to Vienna and Jean. That was so much fun and really such a, such a beautiful, sacred experience for us to work with you both. Hopefully that'll... Uh, you know, change your lives and help you to move in the right direction. Thank yeah. you, Darren. You're awesome, man.
Well, what an honor. You're, you're awesome. And, and what we see in others is, is, is what's inside of all of us. So the beauty of it is it's such an expansion. And I feel so expanded from this interconnection. And those that we missed as far as wanted to do sessions, um, thank you for, for raising your hands. We appreciate it. This was just a blast. And have an amazing rest of your day. And keep shining bright, infinite love and gratitude. Yeah, take care, brother. You too. Take care. All right. Bye-bye.